Hey everybody, Jeff here, and I know why you're here today. You are here because you have a leak under your bathroom sink drain. And who knows, maybe it's dripping down the threads here, and so you found us, and I'm glad you came by today because we're going to help you solve that. So if you're looking at the picture on the screen here, you can see here's an actual failure here, and you can see a little bit of droplet of water coming out of the bottom of the basin there where it meets the gasket and maybe that's similar to the problem you have. Okay, so if this is your first time here with us, uh, I just wanted to welcome you to our channel. We have lots of videos up that show you everything you need to know about remodeling and all sorts of engineering disasters. So while it's fresh on your mind, you might want to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can be aware of all of the new videos when they come out. And also, if you like our video, we would appreciate if you give us a thumbs up. Click on that thumbs up icon down below, all right? So let's take a look at the drain. This is what most drains typically look like. And I'm going to show you the, the three possible failure modes of why you're getting a leak after you just did a textbook install. You follow the manufacturer's instructions completely to the T, but yet it's still leaking. Why is that? So let's examine what happens here. So if we want to take a little bit closer look over this way here, um, the drain pipe kind of looks like this, and it comes up from underneath the basin and then this is the flange that goes up on top of the basin so when you splashing water everything goes down in here now the thing is is the bottom part will screw into this guy and the, a common mistake people make when they install this is they don't screw it all the way in tight because it's somewhat hard to do if you're using the putty or if you're using silicone it's a little hard to get a grip on it so you really want to push down with your hand while reaching from underneath until you tighten it. So what happens if you don't tighten it all the way? Well, I want to just kind of exaggerate it a little. Let's say we only tightened it up this far. And if you, we come in close here, we can see, see there's that opening there now because we didn't tighten it all the way down, right? So water can get in there. See how the water can get right in that little slot there. See if I didn't tighten it all the way up? And as you, you tighten it, you can see it gets narrower and narrower there so water's not going to get in there. But if I left it loose, didn't go all the way up, water's going to get in, and it will come running down to these threads right here. And it should be stopped by this gasket, you would think, on the bottom of the basin, but sometimes these gaskets don't do the most perfect job. If you can see, there's not much of a ledge on this particular gasket here, right? So the water can still get through these threads. And some people make the mistake of just forcing this gasket up the threads when you should be screwing it up the threads. It, it's threaded itself. And so what I always like to do is screw this gasket all the way down first before we install it. And then we'll, we'll put some tape here. So the main reason why you're, you're getting a, a water coming in is, like I said, if you don't tighten that and the water comes down the threads. Another way is, as you know, these three portholes here are for the air vent on the sink. So you know how all of our sinks have these air vent holes up near the top of the sink down here. And so if the water ever overflows, it comes down and comes in through these portholes, but it can still splash and you know overflow onto this a little bit. So you don't always get a perfect um, seal with these threads here. And especially when you're talking about metal pipes, screwing in with these metal, if you had a metal wing nut here, then, then this basin nut um, wouldn't make the best seal either. So water can leak down through that way as well. And then the third way that you could get a leak from this whole drain assembly is when you push this down on top of the sink, if you didn't seal it well with either the silicone or the plumber's putty, you'll get water seeping down. So those are your, your three main methods of, of how you would possibly get a leak. So how do we stop that from happening then? Well, you could do everything perfectly, but the part could be made wrong by the manufacturer. So what you have to do then is these threads have all got to be sealed. And if you look here at my, these are my four possible solutions and in the pecking order that you should use them. So the first one would be the Teflon tape, then would be the plumber's putty, and then would be the pipe dope, which they also call pipe thread sealant, and silicone would be your last. 
And the reason why silicone is your last is it's more or less permanent, but you can remove it. Uh, some plumbers just complain, oh, it's going to be too hard to get it all off of, uh, and, you know. So really, when you're looking at these threads here, the, the only thing you need to be concerned about is sealing up the space between these threads here, okay? So all you have to do is get them somewhat level so they're smooth across the ridges. So that means you don't have to goop on all sorts of stuff all over the place because all you need to worry about is getting these threads here all sealed up. So we're going to do that here with the tape. All right, so we're going to show you this failure mode in action now. And I've exaggerated it for you so that you'll see a lot of water coming down. See how it's kind of dripping right there? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this and fix that and see what we can do. So what we're going to do first, you always want to make sure your water is shut off, that kind of stuff. And we put a pan under the P-trap here because there's water that's always here in the P-trap. We just unscrew the P-trap. We can dump that there. And then we can pull this off of here as well. Because everything's coming off of here. Okay, and then this is one of the newer ones that I like. It's a plastic one that we just, it's got a snap-in pop-up assembly. So that can just get pull, pulled out of the way. I love those. Now we're gonna unscrew this. Reach around up top and unscrew it from the drain flange. And now we have our drain out. Okay, so now we come up top and you can see we pulled it up. Now remember, this was siliconed in, right? So all the plumbers that claim that silicone's permanent and you'll never get it off and blah, blah, blah. Well, I just pulled it off right there. So we're just going to get a little tool and try to gently scrape off some of the remaining chunks of the silicone that are here so that when we replace this, it'll go right back in there and make it nice and uh, make a good seal for us. Make sure that the drain is in the middle. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what it looks like. What's really happening when that gasket comes up against the bottom of the basin? So if you look, see, here's my fingers here. And this gasket is supposed to just rest up against the bottom of that drain hole in the basin there. And, it's, and you can see it's very narrow, so you have to be pretty accurate about where you get it to make it fill in, in those voids there. And then it, it sort of compresses a little bit up against it. But what happens, like I can see right here, if you look right here where my finger's pointing, you can see there's like, it's not quite perfect here. There's like a manufacturing issue here. It's not perfectly round and smooth right here. There's like a little, I don't know, a little carve out or something on the, on the porcelain. So we're probably gonna have to add some kind of sealant in the bottom here. Most likely we'll add plumber's putty. That's the what most of the plumbers like to do is they'll add plumber's putty under that joint. So that's why you get the leak between the gasket and the bottom of the basin is because it's not sealed good enough around there. And I mean, when you look at these things and I'll bring it back up top and we'll take a look at it here. So here's the gasket. So when you're looking at it, you can see how the, there's a ring on it. That's how it got compressed into that drain. So if we're going to do this, we're going to put a bead of plumber's putty right around it. Now, I'm not a fan of adding anything to these drains that are not called out by the manufacturer. But when you have problems like this, or even a manufacturing problem with the drain, you have to deal with it on, on site. And so plumber's putty is okay. Some people will put pipe dope. Some people will put um, the silicone as well. The silicone will be more permanent. And then if you have to have put another drain in later, you could have problems on the bottom side. That's why, uh, even though I'm not a fan of plumber's putty, because plumber's putty dries and it cracks. 
Plumbers love that they, they these old school plumbers are refusing to use anything other than plumber's putty. But the fact of the matter is, is it dries and it cracks and it molds. And I know a lot of other plumbers on the forums will say, yeah, we love guys that install it with uh, plumber's putty because it brings us more business coming to fix the leaks later. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, review the materials and the pecking order of why we choose these materials. Okay, and here's just a, a quick note for you on the plumber's putty. Make sure you always get stain free. See how it says it right there on the label? And that's because if you try to put regular plumber's putty on a on a basin that's made out of either granite, marble, quartz, sandstone, corian, or cultured marble, that sort of stuff, it stains that material. So always make sure you're going with stain free uh, putty. And then also, if you look here real close, you can see it says on there, Safe, right there, right there, see, safe for most plastics, do not use on ABS. So here in Florida, we use white PVC pipes, so it should be okay on there. But in other states, if you have black pipes, black plastic pipes, you cannot use plumber's putty on those pipes. And likewise, if the tailpipe of your drain is made out of that black PVC plastic or ABS plastic, yeah, I would not recommend putting plumber's putty on there even though a lot of people say well I just put plumber's putty on there to seal up the the threads now that should be your last resort when you have two other perfectly decent products to use like the white Teflon tape and also you have the uh, the other stuff there too the pipe dope so let's take a look at the pipe dope so here's your bottle of sealant here and you can see right at the bottom of the label it says for plastic and metal pipe. The problem is, is when you look in the fine print, which is way back here in the back, you'll see it says on there, not recommended for ABS and CPVC. Now CPVC is that real thin walled pipe. But this too, you can't use this on any of that black plastic pipes that you have in, under your sinks in the states that don't use PVC piping. So you got to always read the label of what you're buying and see, hey, can I use this on the material that I'm going to use it on? Because this right now is saying, well, you probably can't. So this would be probably not high on my list either to try, but I'll use this as a backup in case the Teflon tape doesn't work. Now the Teflon tape will work with everything. So you can use it on metal, you can use it on plastic. The, this pipe dope here is really meant, for the most part, to be used for metal. Most plastic threaded pipes shouldn't have an issue, although once in a while we do find some that have an issue. But this stuff is really meant to be used on metal pipe because metal threads to metal nuts usually don't have a very good seal. So this is ideal for that type of material. Right, so just a, a little tip here, when you go to buy your silicon in the stores, make sure you're getting 100% silicon and make sure that it's clear. Sometimes they mix in the white with the clear and the, and the bins there in the store, so you don't want to grab the wrong one. And I always grab one that says 30 minute water ready, because when I go to seal that flange down, that drain flange, into the sink, I always want to make sure that I, I don't have to wait long before I can do my water test. And you always want to make sure you're buying the right kind of silicon. So this one here says kitchen, bath, fixtures, countertops. This is the type of silicon you need to be buying. Don't buy anything else. Okay, and while we're on the subject of using all these different types of solutions here to solving our leaks, if you have found a great solution for your project, hey, let us know down in the comments, all right? Be sure to, you know, right down below there, because your experience can help others as well. You know, we're, we just showed you a couple of possible uh, fixes here, but maybe you have something different. And also, if you have any questions, hey, post them down here in the comments and we'll get them answered for you. Okay, so what we're gonna do here on this tailpipe then, before we connect it up to the flange here, is we're going to put some Teflon tape here. So I've backed off the nut and I've backed off, I've, un I've screwed back the gasket here all the way to the back end of the tailpipe so that we can put some thread right here some 
Teflon tape right here, and we're going to put some Teflon tape right here. Okay. Now, other people choose to put the pipe dope, which is fine. Some people put silicon, which is fine. Some people will also put the plumber's putty in. You remember, like I mentioned before, you, you got to be careful about whether you can put the, pl the plumber's putty onto this type of plastic. And so, to me, the tape is always the cleanest, and it's the first thing I try. Then if that fails, then you go to some of your other methods here. Okay, so I'm just now starting the Teflon tape here. And I just kind of push it in a little to make it grab. And then I always go around counterclockwise. Because remember, if you're going to be tightening, you want to make sure you're tightening down on the tape and not tightening against the tape and making it loosen. So I do about two or three wraps around. So this is the third wrap around. That's it. That's all I need to do. Okay, so now I'm starting another round of Teflon tape here right up at the top because this is where the flange is going to screw into this up above in the sink. So I just want to make sure that these threads are nice and tight as well. Okay, so now you can see we've completed the, the wrapping. So we have Teflon tape here, the top is sealed, and this is sealed right here at the joint where it meets the gasket. So now there shouldn't really be any water that makes it past that. If it does, then something's really wrong. That means tolerances are really bad somewhere. But no water should make it through this point. All right, so I've got my stain-free plumber's putty. It's the only type I ever use. Roll it up into a ball like that. Just make sure it's nice and moist and tender there, ready to go. And then I just roll it up into a string of spaghetti so to speak. It's like I'm making uh, pasta here. And then I'm going to wrap it around the top of my gasket where I know it's going to meet to the underside of the basin. And then I'll just cut off the excess, throw it back into the tub. So now, by the time I screw this thing into the bottom of the, the drain, under the basin, there's going to be enough plumber's putty here to help seal this last joint right here where the gasket meets the um, bottom of the basin. Now that leak that you saw down there, you know what that was caused by? Because the buyers of this condo that we're remodeling here, they sent in their home inspector and the home inspector, and I hate it when these guys do it, they get under the sink and they put their hands on the P-trap and they go... <laughs> And they wiggle it, but what does he do? He breaks the seal. Guy's an idiot. You're not supposed to ever touch the P-trap under the sink. You don't go yanking on it like that. So he ruined the seal. Another mistake that people do, and I want to show you, is when they're tightening this, the manufacturers usually tell you hand tighten only. So unless they specify to use a wrench, don't ever stick your channel locks on here or any wrench. Only tighten it by hand till it's hand tightened. Because if you tighten it too tight, you're going to deform this gasket and it won't sit snug against the bottom of that basin hole down there. So you'll have a leak then. So that's why if you over tighten, you'll have a leak. That's why you'll generally see, they'll say on there, hand tighten only. So let's go ahead and, and prepare the flange. Okay, now this manufacturer says right there, apply silicon sealant under the drain flange and then place the drain flange into the drain here. So you can see here, these guys specifically tell you to use silicon. They do not say to use plumber's putty. So in this case, I prefer silicone anyway because the silicone seals better than plumber's putty. Silicone is not uh, gonna dry and crack on you like the plumber's putty does and it will not get moldy like the plumber's putty does. So, Okay, so I'm going to put a generous serving of this silicon all the way around this drain flange here. I'm doing it nice and slow just to show you here. We're going to go real slow here and just lots of it on there because we can wipe off all the excess once we're done. And by the way, this stuff is really messy, so you probably want to wear gloves. Um, but also, I normally, when I do these, I'm, I'm just going to put the one that I just had back on there. But normally you see the blue film on there? 
I will leave that blue film on there until I've gotten it down and tightened. And you try to do it fairly quickly. You don't want to wait too long because this starts to sit up. But as soon as I get the stuff all smoothed around, all the, the silicone smoothed around the edge, I will then peel this blue film up. And then if you have to do another little touch up, you do that. But that keeps it from getting the silicone all over this thing. So this is what it sort of looks like. This is how everything's going to made up. So you can see I've got silicone there, Teflon tape there, plumber's putty there. Okay, that's all you should ever need. So um, I just want to reiterate that up top, if you look down here on the on the, the sink drain, the only two sealants you should ever use are silicone or plumber's putty up top. That's it. Nothing else. Down below, the sealants that you should be looking at are Teflon tape first, plumber's putty second, and if you need to get more drastic than that, you can use the uh, pipe dope or silicone. But remember, don't start coating all underneath with silicone because it'll make it harder for the next guy to come and clean all that off. They'll have to trash the entire drain and, and everything. So let's get these connected up. So I just want to show you when I screw these together, I'm going to screw the tailpipe in from down below like this. And you just got to remember that when you're screwing it, that this opening here for the pop-up assembly has to be facing the back wall. Just like that. Not at an angle, but, but like perpendicular to the back wall. So just keep that in mind as you're screwing everything in together. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm pushing down on the drain. I mash it into the silicone. And then from underneath, I'm screwing in the tailpipe. And that's the important part. Remember, like I said, you got to make sure it gets in nice and tight to the flange. So you got to really nice and tight. And then once that's done, then you can adjust the tailpipe so that the back part of it is facing where it's supposed to be. Okay. So now we're settled into the silicone. We're going to wipe the silicone around here. Then we can get a cloth a wet cloth later and make sure that it's all taken care of. Now that that's done, let's go underneath. Okay, so now that we're underneath, we're gonna go ahead and tighten up. And you can see my plumber's putty there. So it should be oozing out a little bit as it fills in the voids. And you're supposed to hand tighten only, according to the directions here on this particular one. And make sure that you always have to keep adjusting, make sure this pop-up assembly is facing the back. Okay, so there's the top part of the drain we put back in. It's siliconed in. And now when we're going to go under the sink and take a look. And there you can see is the tailpipe and it's been put into place and it's tightened down. We tighten this all the way down, hand tighten right here. And you can see a little bit of the excess plumber's putty there. So, what you want to make sure now is you don't touch it. You don't do anything to it. You wait an hour, even though the silicone says 30 minutes on there, right? It says water, 30 minute water ready right there. I like to give it an hour. So, we're going to go to lunch and come back. And then when I come back, we should be able to test it out and it should be fine. Well, here we are. It's been uh, a little over an hour. So we're going to put everything back together now, and we already started with the first nut. The nut goes on first, and then remember that when you put the uh, the gasket on here, the little washer gasket, you always want to make sure that the flat end of it is up. See, like that? So that this can come down on it. And that, see how it angles downward? That fits down inside this part here. So we're just going to put that up in there and screw it in together. Okay, so you can see now it's all put back together here. And what I do before every water test is I always put a piece of paper towel down here just to make sure you want to see if any drops come down. That's the best way to see. And then you'll want to get around and wipe around. Make sure everything here is dry because you want to start in a completely dry state because you don't want to find a water drop and go, hey, uh, was that there before or what? So you don't want to have any question about it. Everything's got to be perfectly dry. So let's turn on the water. Now the water's running, let's see what happens down below. 
All right, so we're down below here, and there's no water coming down. This is good. There's no water leaking anywhere. Paper towels, nice and clean. But don't just do a 30-second test and think you're done. Oh, <laughs> no way, folks. You've got a lot more work to do. you got to let this run. I, I usually let it run 5 or 10 minutes because I want to make sure that there's no water leaking here at this point. I want to make sure there's no water leaking here, here, or over here back in here. Now, this is the most common place to have a leak right here at that spot. And uh, sometimes we'll have to put a little pipe dope in, inside there uh, to keep those two joints together because it's a, there's no gasket in there. It's one of those, uh, just a, a butt joint. I don't really like those, but sometimes they'll leak. So anyway, you want to let this run for a while. And then we have to do another test up top here because when we come up top, you're going to see. You got to fill the sink up and let the water run up to this and let it go down this path because you have to test that path too for the water. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to let it fill up. All right, so here we've got the water coming all the way up here and it's now starting to go into that other little opening there. That's our little overflow vent so the water is now pouring down towards the drain through an alternate path other than the normal route of going down this drain it's going to come out those three holes remember like here's a sample of our drain it's going to be coming out those three holes and going into the drain now so now this is another method that we want to test here to make sure And as you can see down below here, there's no leaks. So this is holding up nicely. And keep in mind, we only did this fix with just a couple of pieces of Teflon tape and just that little bit of plumber's putty that you see right there. Now the other test we have to do, keep in mind, we're still not out of the woods yet. Let's not start high-fiving each other just yet. Because what we do is, now that the P-trap here is filled with water, we want to let it sit like this for a while. It's going to sit anyway, but I'm just saying, you, you want to make sure that over time, it doesn't start leaching out of here. So we've, you know, we do probably a couple of dozen of these a year with all of our projects. And what we've seen a couple of times is it looks fine right now. After you install it, you go to lunch and come back, and you find out while you're gone that it, it seeped out right here and that's because you know the, the p-trap water sits right in there and it can over maybe an hour or so start to leach out so that's the part you want to make sure because I mean uh, how many plumbers have you ever heard of that they do an install and they get called a couple of hours later hey it's leaking what's going on well that's what happens so All right, so now that the water is pretty much kind of draining as much as it's gonna drain out of this overflow here, let's go ahead and open it up now and let it all come down in full force and see how that does below. Let's see if our fix holds up. So we're going to come down below. You can hear the water rushing through. And again, there's no leaks. Now, just because you don't see a leak doesn't mean that there isn't one. So you always got to feel around, just all the way, rub your fingers everywhere around there. Make sure you don't feel any moisture anywhere. At every joint is where I go. All the way down here, all the way over here. And then of course, check the old trusty dead canary there. There's no water droplets on the paper towel. And I wanted to point out something else to you also. When you're dealing with all these different parts and stuff like this here, do not mix and match parts from, you know, one drain into another one, you know. I am a big fan of using everything that came in the box because it was all manufactured at the same time in the same lot and the manufacturer stuck them in there all together. If you start taking parts that, that were maybe milled on a different day or something, you could have problems. And so that's why... You should just keep it all from within the same box. Don't take 
like one gasket off of here and stick it onto another pipe. You know, don't take one of these, these flange from another drain and stick it on, on yours. You're always running into risk. Um, the risk will be less if you, you do all the Teflon tape here, like, like we use here. But so far, this is holding up pretty good. And, you know, we know from experience this is going to work. There's, there's just no way it's going to fail. All right, so here's a question. Supposing we did have a leak still here, what would, what would we do then? Well, my next fallback position here would be to try this here. This is the pipe dope. And we would just try to spread it on thinly the same way we did the Teflon tape up here on the threads is where we would attach this stuff here. And then if that didn't work, our next step would probably be to try plumber's putty and then after that, the silicone. But the silicone, I mean, you would have to have some kind of uh, tolerances that are way off to be able to to need to get to that point where you're using silicon. So you can see less is more here. The drier you can make your solution, the better. So the, the drier solution here was using the Teflon tape. And this case is closed. We finally have our beautiful bathroom back. So this is the bathroom that we remodeled from the studs all the way up. And we put in a really nice niche here with the stones here. So you could see, uh, we have a, another video that describes how we did this entire shower area here from soup to nuts, from studs all the way up to the tile. And we even have a separate video that shows how we did the, the niche over here and then how we did the river rock, um, the accent here going up the, the tile here, how we did that river rock. So be sure to check out our other videos covering those topics as well. Well, this is our video, the end of it, and uh, hopefully this fix helped you out. Today we were able to solve three potential failures that you would have on your sink. So if you like this video, once again, let me remind you, please give us a thumbs up down below. If this video helped you, please let us know in the comments. We always want to hear our success with other people as well, because after all, we do this for you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you can be aware of any future videos we put out for you. Because again, we do this all for you. We are advocates for you, the home buying public, because we're sick of watching builders rip you off. And let me tell you something, we do a lot of projects throughout the year. And every time we open up a wall, we find something stupid the builder did. So that's it for this time, and we will see you next week.